If you want to get into a fight on the Gunternet, there are two absolutely positive ways to do it. The first is to argue about the difference between a Glock and a 1911 and which one's better. The second is to get into a debate about caliber. But I want to talk to you about it today from a perspective of trying to kind of distill what the realities are so that we can make informed decisions about what is best to carry for us for personal defense. So the caliber wars, let's talk about it. So I've got here in my hand a, a whole bunch of rounds for a pistol. I mean, uh, we could start with a 22 long rifle. We can go from there if you want to a 22 Magnum. You could find some handguns in that. I've even got a little 32 ACP. That happens to be a spear gold dot. Those are hard to find. Uh, you also can have here 380 auto. That happens to be a Hornady critical defense. Federal HST and nine millimeter. We can also get 40 caliber, and uh, you know what? I realized that when I went to go get ready for this, I don't have a 45 auto here, but we'd certainly include that. I have a couple others, 357 Magnum and the veritable workhorse of the 44 Magnum. So which one do I choose for my personal defense? The reality is this discussion generates a lot of heat, but not a lot of light. I'm gonna tip my hand and tell you at the end of the day, what you're looking for is anything that falls within the window of acceptability. Now for handguns, we have a standard for that. There's a national standard that's been established for quite some time. It is the FBI protocol for the you know, defensive handgun rounds test. And that test has been validated again and again and again in its effectiveness in seeing what a handgun round needs to do. So if you find a round in a caliber that falls in that perimeter, in that, that, those parameters and does well, carry it, whichever one that is. Now certainly there can be some discussion as to which one of those is within the parameters the best and, and which one does everything just right. And we can get not only into caliber wars, but into particular brand wars and particular round wars from that particular place. But at the end of the day, I mean, really, honestly, I mean it, as long as what you're carrying falls within that parameters of what the FBI says, 12 to 18 inches of penetration in calibrated ballistic gel, and um, particularly for CCW, I'm gonna argue going through the heavy clothing test, then, then that's fine. Carry what you carry best, carry what you like most, carry what you feel most comfortable with, period. Now, here's the reality. I mean, if you knew you were gonna get into a gunfight, well, your first choice would be not to be there at all, right? And your second choice, if I absolutely had to be in a gunfight, is I, I would want a long gun. I would want a shotgun or a rifle, and, and I'd want to bring as many friends as I possibly could, and, and if they knew they were going to a gunfight, they wouldn't go with handguns. They would go with rifles and shotguns. This is why our soldiers, when they go to war, you know, like they're looking for gunfights, they go with rifles. Because rifle bullets do different things than pistol bullets do. Rifle bullets, when you get over 2,500 feet per second, you have not only the permanent wound cavity, but the temporary wound cavity and the hydrostatic shock. All those things come into play, and therefore it makes a rifle a vastly different thing to think about than a pistol when it comes to self-defense and when it comes to effectively stopping a threat with a firearm. But let's establish this from the beginning. Pistols, by their definition, are not great at stopping threats. We carry them because they're portable, because they're easier to carry, because open carrying a rifle is a royal pain in the butt, even if it's legal in your jurisdiction. And so we carry pistols because we can conceal them on our person. We don't have to mess around with people wondering if we're armed or any of those things. We can go about our daily life and kind of forget it's there. That's why we carry pistols, not because they're particularly effective at stopping threats. So again, I have put a link in the description to the FBI standard for handgun rounds. Now, I'm gonna say that those that standard, there, there's a number of tests. It's not just, you know, there's bare gelatin and then there's the heavy clothing test, and then there's a number of barrier penetrations. There's a window barrier, you know, a windshield and uh, a car door, and there's several others in there as well. But for our purposes, I'm not talking about law enforcement actions here. Law enforcement officers are much more likely to have to shoot through a barrier, particularly as they relate to cars, than uh, you and I as CCWs are. And so for CCW, the one that I think is really most important is the FBI heavy clothing test. Because from everything that I have read, from every place that I have read it, from all of the experts that look at it, when they recover handgun rounds from bodies, whether those bodies are still alive or not, they tend to look almost exactly like we see from the FBI heavy clothing test. And so if a round will perform adequately in the FBI heavy clothing test, then it will do that same thing in a person if we need to shoot them. And then the FBI says within that test that they want 12 to 18 inches of penetration. Now, 
again, if you're, you know, some people look and they go, well, wait a minute, 12 to 18 inches, you know, a body's not that thick. No fat jokes, please, too easy. But remember, calibrated ballistic gelatin is supposed to be just a standard medium. It says if it makes that 12 to 18 inches in calibrated ballistic gelatin, then it'll probably go through any intermediate barriers like a hand, like a gun that the guy's holding, not all the way through the gun, but you know, kind of ricochet off it. Uh, go through his arm if it needs to, go sideways through this and then into the guy and hit a vital structure. And that's what you want. What you're really trying to do here is hit the pumps and the pipes. And since it's very seldom that we have a guy that's straight on like a target at the range, we need to have that much penetration in order to reliably do that which we need to do. So once again, I'm gonna point you over to the Lucky Gunner Ammo Ballistics chart. Now they used a, uh, not uh, the FBI calibrated gelatin, they used clear gelatin, but again, go look at them for exactly how they did the test, what the test was all about, how they, they kind of calibrated everything and what they see, and you can see how different rounds perform in different calibers, and that's very, very helpful to know. So before we start talking about which caliber is best or not best or whatever, we have to recognize that there is a truth in an adage that says shot placement trumps all. It's not about the size of the hole necessarily, but where that hole is. If I gut shoot somebody, I don't care until it gets to be a huge round. I don't really care what it does. Its chances of stopping a threat immediately are very small. But even a smallish round, if I put it into the pumps and the pipes, is going to do a much faster job of incapacitating a threat. So therefore, shot placement is king before all things. Now that said though, we recognize that shot placement isn't everything. Because if it was, I, I would shoot a tiny little BB at somebody because I can control it the best and have the most on board. But we go, well, wait a minute, it doesn't make any sense because it won't penetrate far enough, right? A BB will just bounce off you. We don't use sim munitions in live fights for this reason, right? It has to have a certain amount of penetration in order to work. So it has to meet a minimum threshold. And we don't want to just blast through somebody. You know, we don't want to uh, shoot a 50 BMG at somebody at, at 10 yards because it's going to splat through them and, and, you know, endanger people on the other side. So you want to have a maximum penetration as well. And that's what the FBI test does. So that's why we're looking for anything that falls within that range. So here's the reality. Do nine millimeter fall within the range? Yep, they sure do. 38 special? Yep, sure do. 357? Mm -hmm. Yeah, absolutely. 357 SIG? Yeah, sure does. 40 caliber? Absolutely. Does no problem. 45 ACP? 40 by God 5? Absolutely. It certainly does. Works just fine. 50 Action Express? Sure, go ahead. Knock yourself out. 44 Magnum? The most powerful handgun round in the world. Yes, go ahead. That's all well and good. Go for it. To me, the caliber wars just boils down to what do you think is the best combination then within that caliber, within that idea of it, does it meet the minimum requirements? Now, of, of interest right now, there is some debate about 380 ACP. And some people would say, man, I don't know if it's good enough or not. And, and it kind of is marginal. What I tend to see is, is that when you get rounds that expand, you know, kind of make a big hole. Because, look, if your shot placement's good and your penetration's good, you'd rather have a bigger hole than a smaller hole. That just makes obvious sense. You'd rather, you know, destroy more than not because you're trying to stop someone. And, and a bigger hole does that, bleeds more. So, but, but does a 380 penetrate enough? And what we tend to see is a 380 is at that 12 inch penetration, it's kind of right on the line. It, it, it sometimes is over and sometimes is under and somewhat depends on the, on the round and the, the bullet and all that, but, but it's kind of right on the edge. And some people are like, it absolutely does just fine. It's no big deal. It's wonderful, use it. Some people are like, man, I just, I wouldn't defend my, depend my life on it because it's just too far close to the line. Which one's the right one? The honest truth is I've carried a 380 ACP. I think in something with a little bit more barrel length, like a, a Glock 42 or something like that, it's probably fine. Uh, but I also think personally that for me, with the proliferation of micro nines, and I can shoot the nine millimeter pretty easily, I don't feel a significant difference in recoil personally. So I would choose a nine millimeter over a 380. But I think, again, it's marginal and marginal, you know, it's like a C minus, right? Is a C minus a passing grade? It does, and if you want to carry a 380, okay. Now that doesn't mean we're not going to give each other a hard time, right? We're all on the same team, so we're going to give each other the business about stuff and talk about 40 short and weak and how old the 1911 or the 45 ACP is, and you know everybody's going to make fun of nine millimeter carriers because they're spray and pray, and I totally get that, and I think it's all in good fun and, and all that stuff. But at the end of the day, anything within the the acceptable window is perfectly fine. So therefore, choose the handgun caliber that you want, that you think is best. 
There's always going to be a trade-off here between capacity, kinetic energy, size of the bullet. That's everything that's going to happen every single time. So you got to ask, wait a minute, is size of the bullet the most important thing for me? If so, you'll probably go to the larger end of the spectrum. Is, uh, you know, capacity the bigger end, the bigger deal for me? More opportunities to put shot placement first. Well, then you'll probably go to the smaller end of the spectrum. Is a recoil control the most important thing for me? Well, it, you know, if you don't have heavy grip strength, we might go towards the lighter end. And if you do have really big paws, you know, and, and recoil control is not a big deal to you, you might go the other way. But that then ends up being a very personal decision. Who am I? How big a capacity? Maybe I'm limited on capacity administratively or legislatively, and therefore that's not an issue for me. So how those all work out end up making your decision what the best is. Now for me, I personally shoot nine millimeter. I carry an HKVP9 every day. I'm very happy with that choice. I find personally that I can shoot it fast and accurately and faster and ac more accurately than a 40 or a 45. And I like a semi-automatic gun. And so that's the one that I really feel most comfortable with for myself right now. I'll change when something better comes along. I have no personal connection to the nine millimeter. And if something will objectively do better, I'll change. It's not a big deal to me. But for right now, that's my personal choice. Does that mean you have to choose it? No, you choose what's best for you. You do the best thing for you. And let's continue on. We can have a caliber wars all day long and that's great and that's fun and I don't have any problems with it. But as long as you choose something that's within the box, that's within the acceptable parameters, no problem. Choose what you want and cover your ASP.